Good evening, and this is Crypto Divas with Gillian Goxill and myself, Lena Lars, uh, Wilson, and it is Sunday again. Uh, we missed last week um, because we tend to get a bit busy and tied up with things, but um, let's now see what happened this week in, um, in the world of crypto and blockchain. Um, Gillian, do you want to start with your stories? Okay, well, actually, I saw a nice flow chart. And this whole thing, you know, is Bitcoin dead and all this sort of thing. And a really clever flow chart that has, first thing was, is it still settling uh, millions of dollars worth of value every day? Yes, it's alive. Is, it, is the unit price greater than zero? Yes. Um, are blocks still arriving roughly every 10 minutes? Yes. Guess what? Bitcoin is still alive. <laughs> I thought, wow, because again, because Warren Buffett's come out saying again, oh, it's delusionary and it's so Bitcoin by those that simple flowchart is still alive. That's great to hear. <laughs> but yeah, it's it's a good point. Like people keep saying, Bitcoin is dead. Bitcoin is te dead. But you know, as long as it has value and transactions are happening, it clearly isn't dead. Yeah, totally. Um, I've been sort of in the past few weeks, really following the story about the Quadriga CX, and oh my God, the plot thickens again. Mm. So uh, I found this article, of course, every, you always need to be aware of, uh, wary of fake news, but apparently one of the co-founders um, of Quadriga CX is a convicted felon who served time in the US. And his role was online identity theft, and he was part of it. So I think he did. He did. Um, this is from uh, Outline.com, and they state that he served 18 months and was in house arrest in the U.S. Then later on, changed his name, moved to Canada, and uh, they started um, some exchange businesses. So you know that raises a few more questions. What what is actually yeah. going on? Because I saw there was also Kraken has put up a competition uh, offering I think it's 100k whatever if people can find the missing funds from that CEO because it's 190 million missing whatever so he's put up a hundred thousand reward but then also they were saying that a lot of the missing wallets which the, the money is missing from is actually on Kraken itself so um, it's on Kraken Bitfinex and, and another exchange too as well so it, it's kind of weird and then they brought in the actual Quadriga CX themselves brought in Ernst and Young to do an audit, uh, but they're still missing twenty six thousand Bitcoin. So it's just yeah, it's it's weird, isn't it? There's so many stories floating around. Yeah, and the whole whole story is about it being in cold storage and no one can get it, but they did check and their wallets, the cold storage wallets were actually empty. Yes, and yeah. they they transferred money out uh, just before uh, the guy died. And now they have accidentally sent $400,000 uh, into this cold wallet. So, you know, you can, that's the thing with crypto. You can say, oh, I see cold storage and we can't access it. But it's very easy to find out whether there is money in that cold wallet. Ah, that, that makes sense to me now. I didn't quite understand the, the implications. Of it. So they found the wallets and they're empty. So yeah. where is the money? That's a very good question. Also, the question is, you know, where's, is the guy really dead? Um, <gasps> some articles uh, suggested that that may not be true because uh, they said that he had complications due to Crohn's disease, which normally isn't fatal. And he was a relatively young man. And also it happened in India. And apparently it is very easy to fake death certificates in India. Wow. Wow. That is interesting. That's a story. That is a story for sure. So mm. I'm, I'm waiting for sort of new things that happen. And of course, you know, if the man is dead, I'm really sorry for. Of course. Yeah, everyone's lost. But uh, you know, something really weird is going on. It's 190 um, million dollars has just vanished into thin air. Um, yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Wow. Okay, but I have another competition. Uh, Binance doing competition to their, their decks, they've got a, a beta version out. And I'm not quite sure how it works. It's not about how, I don't know, you have to, I have no idea how it works, but if you are successful, you win a hundred thousand worth dollars worth of uh, finance coins. So if you can figure it out, you're a trader. 
worth checking that out, but I have no idea how it works. <laughs> yeah, should, um, should, should have a look at that really. But you should, you're a trader. You should have a look at it. I'm not going, it's something to do with price volatility and oh, I have no idea. It made no sense to me. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I've not been sort of day trading for many, many years now. Um, but uh, it's, it's interesting. So. Hmm. And then did you see that uh, delete Coinbase campaign? Yes. Because they've taken on, they've acquired Neutrino, I think is the name of the, um, of the, uh, the, company which is part of the hacking team that sells an offensive surveillance capabilities to the government law enforcement agencies and large corporates and then they had a problem so it's delete coinbase and then a problem because you have to have a zero balance on your coinbase accounts to delete it and also people have dust in their accounts which is like you know fragments of cryptocurrency and they can't close their accounts so there's a lot of angst over there on the delete coinbase campaign mm -hmm. yeah i remember um, I do actually like these kinds of campaigns. So if a company is doing something wrong that you delete them. But the thing is people have a very short memory online or if they need it some, for something, they will, like um, I deleted Uber. Um, when was it when their uh, CEO came out with some outrageous things uh, that he said, I can't even remember what it was. And I thought, that's it. So I'm never using Uber again. There's other apps out there. But of course in certain regions, or let's say if in Tallinn Taxify was taking too long to come, I would I would use Uber again. Yeah. So you know well, like, do you remember when the French were doing nuclear tests someplace somewhere in the world? It was about twenty years ago. And I was married at the time. We said we're never drinking French wine again. <laughs> I think I've drunk French wine since and I can't even remember where the tests were. Maybe they stopped the test. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, it's nice to you know, kind of boycott things um, that your views don't align with, but really it's not always permanent. So I thought with Dove, do you remember Dove got into trouble because they were supporting some sites, they were advertising on, and they were the sites were either, I think they were misogynistic or they, they weren't very nice sites and other brands took off their products, but Dove didn't. It's kind of ironic given that Dove does that, that beauty, you know, every woman is beautiful, whatever, no matter their shape, whatever. And so for a long time, I didn't use Dove products, but I like their soap. So I'm using their soap again. Oh, I'm, I'm very fickle, aren't I? <laughs> What's Dove owned by? Oh, oh um, Unilever. Unilever. Well, you know, in that case, they're all, they're all evil. Yes, they're that's all, true. That is very true. They own, they own everything. So mm. there's really... Uh, you can boycott Dove, but you'll probably be buying something else um, that they own. Um, what else did I find here? Oh, so uh, Ripple is now trading on Coinbase. Um, and uh, this was, there, there were some rumors, was the end of 2017, that Coinbase would uh, have Ripple on the exchange. But that never happened and that of course saw a big spike in uh, the price and you know in the real world that would have been insider trading mm. um so i just out of interest i looked at coinbase well sorry uh, at ripple's price and um it didn't really have an effect so they listed it on february 25th okay the price went up 10 percent but then, you know, went back down again and there's no significant change, I would say. Mm. I mean, people, either traders, um, crypto traders are beginning to have more sense that some random news doesn't put the price up, you know, 100% anymore. Or, you know, no one really cares. Hard to yeah. say. It is hard to say, isn't it? Um, though I saw, of course, didn't it hasn't Facebook launched? They're going to be launching their cryptocurrency the first half of this year. They've come out and said that as well, like J.P. Morgan last week, and now Facebook. Ooh, there's a surprise. Let's ban all ICOs, but let's launch our own. Mm. Well, I mean, they don't need an ICO. They can have that. Anyone can have their own token. If I if I wanted to, I could do a Lina coin and just you know give it away. 
I suppose why not? <laughs> yeah, a friend of mine did that, uh, Dean Kirkwood. He does Crypto Dog, the it's a podcast series. And uh, he did lots of dog coins, crypto dog coins, and gave them away, I think. Yeah. Mm. I mean, there's nothing, nothing stopping anyone from doing it, whether there's a point. But in Facebook's case, I can definitely see microtransactions, them saving a lot of money on uh, payment processors. Yeah, because you imagine if you want to boost something just for, you know, 10 cent, whatever, you might go for it. Yeah. I can see them they make a lot of money out of that. Right, what else happened? Um, Ripple is in, you know, still going on <clears throat> with a um, class action lawsuit, um, which, you know, is fair um, that Ripple sold uh, the, the tokens, but they were in fact securities, which, you know, in case of many projects, that was the case. Uh, but if Ripple Oh, there's a lot of legal jargon. I'm really tired, so I'm trying to just understand what's going on there. Um, yeah, so what, what they are, they're trying, looks like they're trying to delay the case as, for as long as possible. And um, then it means it will be a very long time, um, months or years before the dispute is finally resolved. And, you know, who knows what goes on. Mm. My point. I think there was some news about the, the, it's been put to a lower a lower court, which is I'm not sure who it's good for, but there was some shenanigans. Um, I wasn't really following it, so I must confess. It, uh, they had like a minor victory, so that means a judge ruled that the uh, ongoing class action lawsuit must remain in federal court. Yeah, and that may give them a slight advantage going forward. Yeah. That's it. That's what I saw. Then I saw the Signature Bank of New York is offering business accounts. They're a full US banking uh, accounts to licensed fintech firms in Bermuda. That's I've, I've done a few interviews with people in the Bahamas and in the Caribbean and Bermuda. The guy there, David Burt, I think his name is the, the premier. He's being pictured with CZ from Binance. And uh, yeah, the Bermuda is looking to create a high standard regulatory regime for fintech uh, startups and business. That's kind of nice, a nice story. Yeah, um, something completely the opposite to that. <laughs> um, blockchain in Malta are facing difficulty in finding banking services. So there's the same problem here in Estonia right now. We are in the midst of a huge anti, uh, huge money laundering, uh, um, scandal. So it was Danske Bank, and now it seems like another huge bank over here, Swedbank, has also been doing something really shady. But what has happened? Even that had nothing to do with crypto. Um, Estonian banks are not opening bank accounts for companies dealing with crypto or anything to do with blockchain. So, so even though the scandal wasn't to do with crypto, they're penalizing crypto. Yeah. It's uh, of course they're they're trying to penalize anything, but uh, you know I'm I really don't understand if you're if you have a blockchain startup, what's that got to do with anything? Mm. How how are they to blame for what you know the one of the biggest uh, Nordic banks have been doing laundering Russian money? Wow, wow, that's mad, isn't it? And actually, in contrast to that, uh, Macron, the French Premier President. He came out this week and said that he, blockchain will put Europe at the vanguard of innovation, whatever that means. So he's uh, obviously pro blockchain. That's that's always good to hear. People are pro blockchain. And yeah. Musk has been saying, we've seen that too. Uh, someone tracked down. Musk came out this week and said the Bitcoin structure is quite brilliant. Someone tracked back. He's been backwards and forwards and backwards and forwards. I have got Bitcoin. I haven't got Bitcoin. It's only used for illegal transactions. So apparently now this year in February, it's quite brilliant. So Elon Musk is now coming around to the whole Bitcoin thing, I think. Yeah, a lot of people seem to be coming around. But you know, it's, it's what it is. Mm. People, people said no one needed the internet as well. Yeah. yeah. I'm having an argument with a friend of mine 
I've explained to him what, what I'm doing and I'm involved in this area and he's getting quite interested. So now he's watching the price of Bitcoin the whole time. And I'm going, oh, stop. And then he, he, he keeps on challenging me. I'm kind of going, look, blockchain is a technology. It is a, it's neither good nor bad. It's just a technology. And it's so funny, he wants to challenge me on whether it's right or wrong, whether it's good or bad. I mean, it just is. Like you said, the internet just is. You can use it to buy drugs or, you know, watch porn, or you can use it to book a flight or buy flowers for your mom. You know, it's, it's very hard. Some of the people, why they have to have an emotion attached to it, isn't it? Yeah. It is strange. Yeah, I think that's all the news I have for now. Oh, I had one little thing I saw. It was quite, well, it was a, a bit of a scam. There's a, a BHB. They said they were a peer-to-peer -peer lending. They managed to raise 20 million, but in actual fact, it's more like a pyramid scam because you have to refer people and it goes down. And it turns out that of the three founders, two of them are not founders. They just stole the name. I mean, how blatant is that? It was three founders and two of them are, I think, US professors who know nothing about this. And you think in this day and age, wouldn't, especially when they, they've raised about 20 million, people would figure that out faster, wouldn't you? That's a bit crazy. It is crazy. Um, speaking of sort of big scams, have you watched the Fire Festival documentary on that? Yes. Yeah. Oh, God. <laughs> uh, just, you know, it was an outright scam. That's all it is. But, you know, with, with you know, big talk, you can... Mm. Um, get people to fund anything pretty much. And, and I think because they also they spent the money at the start in hiring all those beautiful women because also why would you make a documentary about a scam when it was just a few a few tents were put up you know on the island which, which was was it the Bahamas yeah the Bahamas so why would you put up a few tents and just show it but because they had all the beautiful women and act models at the start that's why they did, did a documentary that was mm, ridiculous yeah. I mean, the money that they did raise was on lies. They said, oh, we've already raised millions and millions and millions. So they were lying to their initial investors. And then, of course, they needed a certain amount of money. But because the initial money wasn't there and the influencers, they want a lot of money. You know, they had the, you know, the top models, the, like the highest level right now. What was it? Gigi Hadid and who else is? I, I didn't know even... the names. But they were very expensive. Um, yeah, and then, you know, okay, we've sold all these tickets and now, now what to do? <laughs> and I like, there was one guy, you know, a reasonable guy saying like, you know, we need toilets. How, this island has no toilets. We're going to have a festival for three days with many, thousands of people. Where are they going to go to the toilet? They're like, ah, stop being so negative. <laughs> <laughs> no, seriously, I, I mean it. We literally need toilets. We'll figure it out. Stop with your negativity. It's like Americans, like think positive. Everything's yeah. going to be fine. No, man, you need toilets. <laughs> <laughs> Basics, funny, isn't it? Wow. Yeah. So interesting week. So, um, yeah, yeah, I, I had a good week. Very busy week. Very busy week coming up. So and then I'm going to South, South Africa at the end. I've got to write a script for that. Oh, 90 minutes. I've got to talk for 90 minutes. How can I talk for 90 minutes? Quite easily, actually. I, I had the same panic recently. I um, agreed to do a lecture in um, uh, the Estonian Business School for um, MBA students. And I thought I'm going to do a little keynote, talk to them about cryptocurrency and blockchain. So I agreed. I said, yeah, yeah, of course, no problem. I'll do it. And they get back to me. I said, okay, so it's four academic lessons, uh, four academic hours. I'm like, oh, how can mm. I talk? This about? It's fine. There's plenty to talk about. <laughs> okay. Well, I mean, at the end of the lecture, people want to listen. There's lots to say in blockchain. <laughs> Okay, I will just be, do you know what? I'm going to ignore a bit that they've given me headlines. I'm going to ignore the headlines and do my own stuff. That's the world. I'm there, so I, they can't help it. That's it anyway. Oops. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, so good week. So I will see you. I might see you next week early because I'm the Sunday. Oh no, I'll be, in, I'll be in South Africa. I'll talk to you on the Sunday because I'm not, I'll be able to do it from there. It'll be hopefully sunny, hopefully sunny in Johannesburg. Brilliant. Okay, so have a great rest of your Sunday. Likewise. And see you next week. Next week.